what's up you guys my name is Amber welcome to my channel and today I'm gonna be talking about how I got hospitalized from severe dehydration this only just happened a couple days ago as I'm filming this so this is still like a very fresh and relevant story time Saturday morning I went into town with my family because like where I live is about an hour away from like our local town that we do anything in. We drove the hour down to go and pick out our Christmas tree. As soon as I woke up pretty much I had a headache and wasn't feeling very great but it was you know no big deal like oh I'll just take some Motrin it's fine you know so we headed into town and we got our Christmas tree and then after a few hours came back up to our house by the time we were home and settled and everything I feel like was around three or four ish and I was fine like my headache had come back but I wasn't really wanting to take anything more yet and I remember kind of around five o'clock like my head just started feeling super foggy and I felt like spaced out, you know, I was like zoning out and was having trouble zoning back in and just I was having a hard time. My brain was just like, I'm out for the night. And I had mentioned it to my mom because I was like, I'm in such like a weird mood. Like, you know, I just feel super foggy and spaced out like I am having a hard time. I was thinking, you know, okay, like maybe I'm just in one of those moods. Maybe I just need to sleep. Like, I don't know. Um, and didn't think much of it. I had continued like all through the night for like hours, just was feeling like spaced out and kind of like lightheaded, couldn't focus properly. And then around 11 o'clock, I had a horrible, like out of nowhere, all of a sudden feeling of just super intense nausea. Like I was like, I'm gonna throw up like right here and right now, but I didn't. And that's just like normal for me. It takes a lot to get me to throw up. So I didn't throw up, but I wanted to and that sensation was there. And I just felt totally awful. And like my headache was back tenfold, like my head was pounding, my stomach hurt so badly. And I'm like, okay, like, because there's been bugs and, you know, sickness going around. So I'm like, maybe I'm just coming down with a bug. Because at that point, I also felt like a little bit feverish too. Like all around, I was just not having a good time. But I'm like, okay, like calm down. Like you're probably just getting sick. Like it's fine. So I took some more ibuprofen and, you know, went to kind of just chill sometime between like 11 and 12 like I started having trouble breathing. Like at some point after the wave of nausea and like wanting to throw up, that slowly kind of started to subside. But then I was having trouble breathing. Like I just felt like I could not fully catch a breath. Like so I was breathing faster. And I was like trying to force myself to do the whole like in through your nose and out through your mouth and like structured breathing. And it wasn't helping or doing anything. And I also felt like a slight pressure and it wasn't like super intense pressure like people explain you know heart attacks because heart attacks are always like oh it feels like an elephant sitting on your chest and like like that and this was not what it felt like it literally felt like somebody just took their hand and like had it on my chest like this right here in the middle of my chest and also on my throat so it felt like someone was touching me like that so I was feeling that and I was having trouble breathing and I had a headache and I like was dizzy and f like could not focus and I'm like ugh, this is a nightmare and I started googling stuff like I started googling symptoms like oh you know having trouble breathing you know I have slight pressure on my chest I'm dizzy lightheaded you know blah 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 and of course the internet is like so dramatic so pretty much every article I saw like every web MD every you know recommendation anything that pops up on Google for any of those things is like oh you sound like you're having a minor heart attack and I'm like oh great I mean obviously like you can't believe web MD otherwise just everyone would think they were dying at all times but every different symptom I kept typing in was like hey this is a symptom of this hey this is a symptom of this hey this is a symptom of this and it was all specifically silent heart attacks because apparently a lot more people than are recorded are supposed to have had heart attacks because a lot of the times it's not you know the whole dramatic like shooting pain in the arm and like clutching your you know like the stereotypical like heart attack a lot of the time it's a lot more minor so a lot of people don't notice thinking that it's other things and I'm like okay like am I having a heart attack am I dying am I just getting sick is my body being over dramatic like I have no idea 
what's going on but as the hour progressed like it was just getting harder to breathe and because too I was like okay like I'm just gonna sit and I'm gonna wait it out like it's really late at night and it's an hour to the nearest doctor or hospital or anything so I chill and you know let it sit and it finally comes to about midnight and it still like hadn't subsided I'm like okay I need to go say something something's wrong like I feel wrong and it was just getting worse so I went and I woke up my mom but okay so I had gone uh, into her bedroom and in her bedroom she also has a bathroom and I was like okay first I have to pee so like if I wake her up and she panics and we need to go I'm like I'm gonna do that first and then we'll see what she says so I did and then of course my dog had to have like pooped and peed all over the bathroom floor so I was like son of a but I was also having trouble breathing so I was like Ugh, you know I can't clean this up right now but somebody needs to clean it up and I also need to tell her because she's gonna you know freak out and go into the bathroom to like go change and like see that it's all there because she was dead asleep and I didn't want to like be mean and like wake her up abruptly so I was kind of just like uh hey mom you know and she was like what and I'm like something's wrong and she was like what what are you talking about you know half asleep like incoherent and I'm like something's wrong like my body is just not feeling like I'm having trouble breathing and I'm having slight chest pressure like blah blah, blah. and she like kind of slowly sits up and is kind of like what's going on you know and I'm explaining and I'm like oh and also uh Ray pooped and peed all over the bathroom <laughs> just throw that in there like I might be dying but also our dog is lame and she was like more concerned about that at the time she was like okay like just sit breathe in through your nose out through your mouth chill for a minute and she like goes and cleans up the bathroom for like 15 20 minutes just leaves me there breathing and I'm like okay to be fair I wasn't like panicking or making a big deal I was like kind of just I was trying to downplay it because I didn't want to panic her but then I was offended that she wasn't panicking on my behalf <laughs> And that's entirely my fault. So like she went and cleaned that up and came back and is like, okay, you know, you've been like, how are you feeling? And I'm like the same, like I still don't feel great. Like it's, if anything, it's getting worse. And she's like, okay, like, do you want to go to the hospital? Do you want to just wait it out? Like it's your, you know, she kept saying like, oh, it's your body. Like you need to figure out what you want to do. And I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. I want my mommy to tell me what to do. You know, as you do, I'm a young adult. I don't have no idea what I'm doing or anything. So I was like, you know, I, like, I don't want to go to the hospital because it's an hour drive away, you know, and I don't want us to like wake up and you to be like completely sleep deprived for work the next day for nothing. Like, I don't want to drive all the way down there only for it to stop on the way down. But at the same time, like, it's been consistent for, like, an hour now at least. And it's not getting any better. It's just getting worse and something feels wrong. So I was, finally, I'm like, okay, like, let's just go to the hospital. Like, let's, like, go to the emergency room and see what's up. So we drove down, made, like, the hour drive down into town to go to the hospital. If anything, like, it was getting worse, like, throughout the ride. Oh my god, it was the weirdest sensation. On and off on the drive down... Like, you know how when your foot's, like, just starting to fall asleep and it's, like, the tingly, but it's not the painful tingly or anything. It's just the kind of, like, oh, this is such a weird sense. I, like, keep doing this because, like, that's what it feels like. Like, the kind of just staticky, you know, like, it feels funky. Like, my chest and my, like, let's put, like, my boobs felt like that on and off the entire ride down. I'm, like, my boobs are asleep. What the f***? I... <laughs> It was the weirdest sensation and I never did end up getting an explanation for that specifically so maybe maybe my boobs just were asleep. We finally get to the ER and you know we park out front and I get out and I just have a wave of dizziness like I I was like oh god like I'm gonna go down like I I didn't faint and I've like I've never fainted so I don't know what it feels like to faint but I assume that that was probably like close to the beginning of that. My mom came around and you know took my arm and like helped me walk into the door of the ER and we walk in and like the uh, waiting room's like completely empty. We walk in and there's two receptionists that are like the way my particular ER is set up like there's a whole waiting room and then there's like a little front desk area and then there's a wall with all of the doors to get back into like the medical ER area but then half of the wall is covered in windows and there's like a little receptionist's office 
in the back but then they also have their office like in front of that window so there's like two separate kind of receptionist desk sets and there were two ladies in the back like way behind the window we walked in kind of you know and like we had to wait for a minute for them to notice us because we're like hey um kind of have an emergency here and they were like oh we'll be right with you in a minute like this is an ER like I understand you're doing your job you probably weren't expecting anyone but the you could have at least because like they noticed us and then still like waited a minute before they're like oh we'll be right with you like they didn't you know they could have at least asked be like oh my god like we'll be right with you is everything okay or something finally like one lady comes around like through the office and around the door into like the front part of the office desk area and she was like slow as too like she was not in a hurry she was just chilling like and at this point it was about 1 45 2 a.m she was like okay you know like have a seat and then she was like can I see your ID and I'm like yeah you know so I give her my ID and she just goes typing away and the other lady is scanning it and you know they're getting my information first and nobody at this point is bothered to ask me what I'm in here or like what's wrong and I'm like I'm in the ER like you should be like hey what's your emergency and then be like also when you have a chance can we get your information but no like literally I uh, did my ID and then like they scanned it or whatever and she gave it back to me and then one of the other ladies is like oh it didn't scan in the right color so she was like can I have it back and I'm like no problem like still hasn't asked me what's wrong and I've been sitting here for like five minutes, you know, and they've been, you know, typing and doing information. Like, what if I were actually having a heart attack? What if I were actually having an allergic reaction and like could not, like nobody asked me what my emergency was or like why I was there till like five, ten minutes after I was already like had been there. Finally, you know, she was like, okay, so like what's the problem, you know, what brings you in tonight? And, sorry, um, and I'm like, you know, I... I'm having a little bit of trouble breathe and like I'm you know kind of struggling to talk at this point like it wasn't that bad but to just mix with the just mix with everything I was struggling a little bit so I'm like you know okay like telling her like I'm having a little bit of trouble breathing like there's a little bit of pressure on my chest you know but like everything's slight like not everything's dramatic and then too as soon as I got out of the car to like come in you know, I felt dizzy and like had trouble walking into the emergency room, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, okay, so you're dizzy. And I'm like, that was the least of what I just said. But yes, among other things, I'm dizzy, you know. And so they're like, okay, like we'll bring one of the nurses in. She'll be with you in just a minute. And I'm like, okay, so I had to wait a few minutes for like the nurse to come out from the back. And then she came in and was like, hey, you know, and I asked again, like, hey, what's up? And then she took my temperature and I had a, had a slight fever and I think she took my blood pressure and she was like, well, that's fine. And so she's, you know, typing away like all of what's wrong and, you know, oh, are you allergic to anything and blah, 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 getting all the information, like getting all the information that they need for the little like wristbands that they give you. Apparently now they give you like scan codes because every time they did anything they had to like scan my bracelet. It was like very high tech. So she was like go ahead like go sit in the waiting room and I'll go see if we have any rooms available in the back. I'm like okay so you know my mom helps me over to a chair and we're sitting for a few minutes. Like a few minutes later the nurse finally comes back and is like okay you know follow me and gets me set up in one of the uh, little like patient rooms she's like okay the doctor will be with you in a minute I'm like okay cool so a few minutes later one of the another like nurse comes in and is like hey you know and asks a couple questions and makes me change into one of the gowns because it's like okay because she asked and she was like did they already give you an EKG I don't know what it stands for but it's like they put sticky things on you and it monitors your heart I think something like that um, and she was like, did they, like, they already gave you an EKG out in the waiting room, right? And I'm like, nope, not at all, like, and she was like, oh, okay, so then we'll definitely be doing one of those, blah, 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 and she sets me up, and she was like, oh, and we also, like, we have to set you up to the monitor kind of thing, so, you know, I get sticky things put on me that are monitoring, because, like, okay, like, for people who haven't been in a hospital, it's kind of like the actual hospital shows, or, like, in movies or whatever, where there'll be, like, a screen next to the bed that monitors your heart rate and, like, a couple different things. I don't know exactly. And she's like, okay, you know, the doctor will be with you in a minute. 
And so like a few minutes later, the doctor eventually comes and is like, hey, you know, what's up? What's going on? So again, I explain what's going on. So she's like, okay, like we're going to do this, this and this. Um, so the nurses will be back and do that. And I'm like, okay, based on all of my symptoms and stuff, the first immediately thought is like, oh, that could be something wrong with your heart. Um, and they did ask a lot of questions, you know, relating about family history, you know, different things, they touch their bases. And so they're very concerned about like making sure there's no emergency situations with my heart. But also the doctor's like, mm, you seem a little dehydrated. So like they hooked me up to fluids was one of the first things or no, was it? No, I'm sorry. They did an EKG first. So, which I had mentioned earlier, they stick a bunch of stuff to you separate from the like little monitor that they have. They stick a bunch of stuff to you, which takes like 10 years. And then it uh, like gives some kind of reading on like the state of your heart. I, I don't know exactly how it works. At this point, I had two nurses who were working on it. And like one of the nurses was so cute. I was like so embarrassed. I'm like, mm, can, can I get somebody else, please? I was kind of just making jokes the whole time. Like I was, you know, I like I was very concerned for myself, but I was also like not trying to be an patient. So like I was, you know, cracking jokes, trying to make light of it. Like it's 2 a.m. Nobody wants to be here. Just making sure to be very nice. Like anytime the nurses, you know, ask like, hey, can we do this or whatever? I'm like, yeah, you know, no problem. Do what you got to do. Like I was very easygoing and compliant, like as I normally am. Like I feel like that's just how you should treat people. But the nurse like kept commenting on it and was like, like, you're so nice. Like you're so easy. Like you're the easiest patient I've had all day. Like I'm like, really? This is just normal, I would feel, but you know. They did the EKG and they're like, okay, like we're gonna hook you up to fluid. So like, okay, like we're gonna give you some fluids. That was like a whole production because uh, it's really hard to find my veins in my arms to do any kind of IVs or blood work or anything. I don't know if it's just because I'm overweight or if there's like something wrong with my veins, but it's like always a little bit more difficult. But this one nurse could not find like ve like my veins in either of my arm, like either side of my arms. And she was finally like, okay, like I guess we'll just have to do it in your hand. And so she puts it in my hand and like still can't like get the vein and like She's like, oh, I feel so bad. I don't want to poke around. And I'm like, do what you got to do. Like, do your thing. And she kind of tries, you know, poking around and it didn't work. She's like, all right, we're going to try somewhere else. So you can even see I have the two little dots still. It's been a few days um, from where the IV went in and we eventually like used that one. Um, and the IV went in because, oh, because they also, they had to take blood. So first they took blood and then they're like, you seem kind of dehydrated, like we're going to hook you up to some fluids. So they took, yeah, the blood off for blood tests and then they hooked me up to a bag of fluid that was just being uh, inserted into the vein, which was painful, not because I have an issue with needles, but because of where it was at and the angle of the needle, like the needle went in, but ended up like getting pushed up. So it felt like it was pushing up against my skin and wanted to like rip out. So I had to keep my hand at like very certain angles so it wasn't so painful. So it was a bit of a pain in the ass. And then uh, I got the fluid. And if you never had an IV drip, that is the weirdest sensation because you can literally feel it going into your vein. And also for whatever, like the fluid was colder than it was, like was colder than my body temperature. So it literally just felt like ice being inserted into my vein and it physically turned my entire arm cold. Like I could touch this arm and it was freezing cold and like touch the other arm and it was fine. It was the weirdest thing. Like literally it felt like some X-Men shit. Like I felt like I was Deadpool, like having that like injected into my veins and they were like trying to find my mutation. It was weird. So I had that and got a whole bag IV and at some point another guy came in and was like, hey, we have to do a chest x-ray for like your heart and your chest and stuff. So it was like, yeah, no problem. So they did the x-ray and they were kind of like, all right, now we have to wait for all the tests to come back. So just kind of sit tight and chill like okay and at this point I kind of ish had started to feel a little bit better but still was like having trouble breathing and still slight pressure on my chest so it was like kind of better but the problem wasn't solved so you know we were kind of just sitting tight and by that point it was all right it was probably about like 4 a.m at that point like I had already been there for a couple hours 
and it didn't feel at all like I had been there for a few hours because they had just been like doing stuff the whole time with you know slight breaks in between so I hadn't realized how late it was after a while you know I had had a whole bag of fluid inserted and I was like kind of ish feeling a little bit oh another thing that they noted was uh they had to do I don't remember what it's called but it was some kind of blood pressure test where they took my blood pressure laying completely down sitting up and then I had to stand up and they were monitoring like all of my vitals and stuff as they did that especially blood pressure and when they did that like it was you know laying down was okay sitting up was okay and then when I stood up apparently either my blood pressure or my heart rate or both dropped 30 points. I don't remember which it was. It might have just been the blood pressure. Something dropped like significantly. So that was kind of one of their main clues and like what they were. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Getting my timeline a little mixed up. That was the first test that they did. Or maybe it was the second after the EKG. I don't know. It was one of the first things they did and they did that whole blood pressure test and I had dropped 30 points and so they were like mm, that's not good and I think that was what gave the doctor the idea like oh you seem kind of dehydrated you know like you don't seem like you have vertigo you know you seem kind of more dehydrated so like let's get the fluid in you and then okay timeline back on track so I had a full IV drip bag of fluid inserted in me that sounded gross and then one of the nurses comes back and is like hey you know do you think you might have to go to the bathroom at all I thought she was just asking like oh like do you want a chance to go I can unhook your stuff so you can do that and I was like no you know I'm okay kind of and she was like oh okay well just like let me know when you do because we need a urine sample and I'm like oh well f I mean I could have probably forced it but whatever but she goes and tells the doctor and comes back and is like doctor says to give you another IV drip I'm like okay and she was all like oh like that should make you pee in no time and I'm like okay so at this point I'm like am I getting a second one because they think I'm that dehydrated am I getting it just because they're trying to make me pee like ended up being a little bit of both um so I had the second bag in for a while and you know she leaves for like a while and comes back and is like do you have to and I'm like I can probably force myself like we'll just get it over with so I go, uh, she unhooks everything and takes me over to the restrooms and I, you know, do the urine sample and then get hooked back up to everything. Or well, I get ba hooked back up to the, like, monitor, but I don't get my IV hooked back up. And I had asked because she had, like, left and came back and I was like, hey, like, did I need this hooked back up? Did I need more fluids? And at that point I had had about half the bag of the IV drip, um, like half of the second bag. And she was like, no, you know, it was kind of like most, like the second one was mostly just to get you to like use the restroom. And I'm like, oh, okay. And at this point I had still like been progressively like feeling a little bit better. Um, I definitely started to feel a lot better once I started getting the fluids in me and like the IV drip kind of helped my headache go away a little bit and it helped the fogginess and like the spaced out kind of feeling in my head go away but I did still was still dizzy and I had gotten some of the nausea to come back and I was still having like slight breathing issues and so they go and all of the tests come back and you know the doctor comes in and is like so you know we have all your tests and everything kind of looks great like you know other than like you were very dehydrated so we think you know that could have been a lot of it but otherwise like your heart looks great we've ruled out any immediate emergency issues so like definitely go and follow up with your primary care doctor in a couple days because we're still not exactly sure why you're having the breathing issues but we've ruled out any emergency situations and like you're just dehydrated so make sure to hydrate and she's like like drink a ton of water for the next couple days like at least two liters a day you know emphasize like how dehydrated I was and that my heart was fine she was like yeah your lungs are fine your heart's fine like apparently all those tests came back great which I mean I was stoked about because like as a plus size person everyone's always like oh my god your heart must be in so much strain so I was actually genuine like I low-key like genuinely thought I was having a minor heart attack um, especially because in the couple days prior to all of this like I did have funky pains in my arm so like I like low-key genuinely thought I was having a heart attack and uh, it turns out I wasn't apparently my heart's great but I was just very very dehydrated we didn't leave until 6 a.m. so I was at the hospital like doing tests and under monitoring and stuff from like 2 to 6 a.m. that's a long ass time 
Like, that was four hours of getting tested and getting fluids put in me and, like, panicking and, like, having trouble breathing and it, it, it was an ordeal. We drive back up and get back home around 7 and I just slept most of that day. The breathing uh, issues did go away and I did Google, like, okay, you know, everything was pretty much explained by being, de like, severely dehydrated except for the breathing issues and chest pressure. So I looked that up and apparently if you're like really really hella dehydrated you can't it like does affect your breathing and causes you to have like rapid and strained breathing. So I was like okay I'm surprised that you know the ER doctors didn't know that or maybe they just weren't thinking like of that correlation didn't think I was that to, I don't know but according to the internet so you know every grain of salt but yeah the internet was like yeah that's if you're really badly dehydrated like you can totally have breathing issues. And I'm like, well, that's good to know that it wasn't like something else, that it was just the dehydration, most likely. I'm feeling much better than I was, obviously, when it all happened. I'm still not feeling great. I'm still honestly feeling like <laughs> But I am working on drinking water. I've been chugging that. Not chugging, but I've been drinking it consistently throughout the day. Long story short, I was hospitalized because I was hella dehydrated. They thought I was having a heart attack. I was not, in fact, having a heart attack. Just my body is over dramatic, um, and now I'm okay. So, what is my point for this story time and telling you all of this? I don't know. Content, the attention, definitely the attention. <laughs> um, no, mostly I just wanted to kind of share my story in case maybe anybody else has experienced anything similar, but like didn't get the answers they were looking for. Like, if anybody else has been like, oh my god, I think I'm dying, like maybe you're just dehydrated. Or like if you're getting dizzy, you know, frequently, if you're having headaches frequently, like you really genuinely could just be dehydrated. Like the lack of water and hydration can account for so many issues that are indicative of a lot of more dramatic things. A lot of times they're not. You're just not drinking enough water. So like, don't be a thirsty and just drink enough water. If you would like, go ahead and give me a pity subscribe because like, let's be real, I was hospitalized for this story time. Like, let's show some appreciation that I'm not dead. If you would like any more life slash YouTube updates, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at what is love is the weapon. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I had a blast hanging out with y'all. Peace.